There's probably no hotter political debate right now than border closures. The rich and the powerful are given green lights to jump state lines, while exemptions for urgent medical help are denied. I spoke with New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian a short time ago. Premier, thank you for your time. Nine News tonight reported on the poolside holiday for something like 400 AFL connections in Queensland when a couple of days ago they were in a, a, what's deemed a highly infected hotspot in curfewed lockdown in Melbourne. What is your reaction on seeing that vision? Oh, look, I just want um, the Queensland Government to have a compassionate approach to people in our northern border communities who are doing it tough. People wanting to access critical medical services, businesses wanting to be able to trade as they normally do. I did have a conversation with the Queensland Premier yesterday, but it was around health workers and she said she was amenable to looking at that. But uh, in the meantime, we know that people are suffering uh, businesses are suffering and I just want to do the right thing by our citizens, not necessarily just on the New South Wales border, but our border communities who are suffering as a result. OK, so how does it make you feel when hundreds of AFL people who were a couple of days ago in Melbourne, not allowed to mix with each other socially, not allowed to exercise together, are now swimming in a pool in a bubble in Queensland and you have to negotiate to get doctors and patients across the border into hospitals? Look, I guess the Queensland Government would argue, oh, they're in quarantine and et cetera, et cetera, but that's little comfort to people who are really struggling just to get the basics of life and just to get the critical medical attention they need. The businesses who are really craving their workers or their tradies who might be on the other side of the border, this is really a basic human issue and I'm really appealing to the Queensland Government to reconsider their position. I'm asking them to put people first, not necessarily other considerations. And it's really important for me as Premier to know that I've done everything I can on behalf of our communities who are doing it tough. Governments have cajoled Australians through the, the, the crippling sacrifices uh, that they have had to make during this pandemic by telling us that we're all in it together. When you look at those pictures, it doesn't look like that, does it? It looks like one rule for some and another rule for others. Well, I'm proud of the fact that in New South Wales, um, notwithstanding the huge challenges we've had, and we're never out of the woods until there's a vaccine, but we're managing the control of the spread of the virus as best as possible. And our community transmission rates are there, but they're not, they're not a great numbers. And that's why I just can't understand why you would even have a border on the Queensland-New South Wales border. Certainly understand in the case of Victoria, that was a joint decision we took with the Victorian Premier and the Prime Minister. But there's really no reason. Ironically, there's been no cases north of Newcastle in, in New South Wales uh, since about March. No community transmission whatsoever. So South East Queensland, ironically, has higher infection rates than northern New South Wales. And I just feel the Queensland Government needs to show a bit more compassion and needs to be a bit more uh, down to earth in dealing with people's daily problems. Queensland has told you, the Premier has told you, that you have to go 28 days with no community transmission, no mystery, not one mystery case before the border will reopen. Have you managed 28 days with not one mystery case since this pandemic started? Tracy, great, great question. I don't think anybody on the planet has. I mean, no matter how well you're doing, no matter how far down you get the rates of community transmission, and New Zealand's a great example. New Zealand went for an elimination strategy. They shut down their entire economy, they shut down their entire country, and they still had cases. Here in New South Wales, we've taken a much more balanced approach. We are controlling the spread, the numbers are low, we hope to get them down even further, and some days will be higher than others, but we're allowing our jobs, our economy to con continue to grow, and that's a really healthy balance. What we have to do is learn to live with the pandemic, not live in these false bubbles that will only make life harder for people and will only cost jobs uh, into the next few months and beyond. Once JobKeeper runs out, uh, I worry about what's going to happen, and I hope the Queensland Premier and the WA Premier share my concerns because if they did, they would reconsider their borders. Do you wonder if magically the Queensland border will lift once the election is done in October? Uh, well, there is that potential, but I don't want to uh, get too political on that. Suffice to say, um, when it comes to people, when it comes to jobs, 
when it comes to livelihoods, I think compassion and common sense have to dominate, not other issues. You just mentioned the WA Premier. Uh, you know, border closures are politically extremely popular. Uh, Mark McGowan has a 92% approval rating and Anastasia Palaszczuk obviously thinks that keeping the borders closed is going to be an election winner for you. You're a politician. It's very hard to go against what your people say they want, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is. But I think what people also have to put into perspective, and I appreciate um, you do have to consider what your own population says, but you also have to consider what is the consequence of that. You might not feel the consequence today, but in three or four or five months, when you have thousands of people joining the Centrelink queue because they have no jobs, that number will come crashing down. You live by the polls, you die by the polls. What you need to do is what is in the best interest of your citizens. And I've worked out during this pandemic. What's really important is doing the right thing by your citizens and to think about the consequences of your decisions. And I just don't want to have any regrets as far as the New South Wales government's concerned. I want us to always be able to look back and think we always tried our best. We won't always get it right. We won't always have a mistake-free uh, situation. But what we will do is make sure that every decision we took was because of the best interest of our citizens, whether today, in the medium term or the long term. OK, we'll leave it there. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Tracy.